Hey everyone, this is Rebecca with Digital Thinker. And in today's video, I am joined by Victor, the integrations architect at Digital Thinker. He's going to share an introduction to DataBridge Pro and demonstrate a high level example of its capabilities. So I'll go ahead and hand it over to Victor. Victor, thanks for joining. Thank you for having me, Rebecca. Yes, apparently this is a very hot topic recently, and a lot of you have asked for some hands-on demonstrations of what this technology can do. Uh, I know there's a lot of fear in the world as far as ION being deprecated over the future um, and trying to get off of that and on David Pro. And you're trying to make a decision and say, what's my best middleware for me? Um, and there's really not that much out there to show you what it actually looks like. So today, I'll kind of show you how it uh, performs as far as replacing ION. Uh, what are the similarities between it and ION? And we'll show up basic demo, uh, basic flow uh, to show you how it works. Um, so from there, let's go ahead and get started. Um, so like ION, um, there's a lot of screens within EAM uh, that are the exact same. Uh, so to set up ION, you had to go in here and actually uh, do some stuff within DataBridge. So DataBridge is basically um, a part of EAM that actually processes the BODs that came out of ION, the business object documents, which are basically just the XML formats uh, of the data you're sending back and forth. Um, so DataBridge, really what it does is actually process that XML and then uses the native web services within EAM to actually manipulate data as far as pushing it uh, as well as um, receiving it in. Um, so again, with that said, there's a few things in DataBridge we need to actually manipulate before we even get to uh, the uh, DataBridge Flow Studio, uh, the Data Flow Studio part of the section here. Uh, so, okay, so we've got DataBridge partners. Now, these were partners we had to set up um, for ION as well, right? We have our basic enterprise partner, which needs to be active. Um, back in the day, there was an Infor on-ramp partner, which we used for, uh, for ION. Now it's actually been replaced by the Infor IMS partner. So this is actually the partner that sends data to ION as well as receiving it from ION. Uh, but then you'll find if you go to the screen that there's actually a new partner. Uh, this is our Dataflow Studio partner. Okay, so within here, right, this mostly should be set up for you. The user ID and password, I believe, should all be there for you. Um, you know, this is pretty much out of the box. All you got to do is activate it. Um, and then from there, uh, we go to either subscriptions or inbound documents, depending on the way we're sending data or receiving data. Uh, subscriptions will be for documents we're sending out from EAM. Um, so let's look at what we already have enabled in this uh, demo environment here that we have set up. So, um, we have a bunch already enabled, it looks like, from when I was testing this a long time ago. The sick maintenance order being one of them. That's what we'll work on today. That's just a work order. Um, so we can see that's enabled. So that's good to go. That's good to be sent to uh, Dataflow Studio. Um, again, like I touched on, if you want to send things from Dataflow Studio to EAM, uh, the reverse side of the flow, you need to then actually uh, enable a lot of these here. These are the inbound documents that EAM is configured to accept from Dataflow Studio. Um, next from there, once we have our partner set up, we then want to go to DataBridge setup itself. This is basically, so these correspond to install parameters in the back end um, and actually really correspond to triggers in the database. So when I'm flipped, when I flip this work order outbound to a yes, um, when I then approve a work order uh, within the database, it actually looks and says, okay, I'm doing all these things to approve it, you know, checking all these boxes. Um, let's just check to see if this flag is flipped to yes. If so, it'll then try to form a BOD and send it outbound. Um, and based on how we've configured our partners, it'll then send that data from there. Um, so uh, as we can see here, these actually do all correspond to an install parameter code. You can see within there, that's the sync work order. Uh, so if you're trying to send some information that's not within this screen, you can maybe go into the um, the install parameters and find out there. But I digress. That's getting a little too heavy for this, this demonstration here. Um, lastly, to make sure it's actually on and going, um, we need to look at our jobs. So these actually correspond to Java jobs. Um, the one we're looking for, I believe, is uh, where are we at here? Job set up somewhere. Whoops. Let's see. If we turn back to. Okay, there's job set up. Okay, 
And these are all basically our jobs that our data bridge um, to set up our data bridge server. Okay, so these are all enabled. So these are the, pretty much the two you want to have enabled. I usually have this one on as well. Um, your job generally takes a few minutes to turn on. So if it turns on, you try to activate this immediately. You know, give it some time. It takes about 15 minutes sometimes for these jobs to actually turn on and run. Um, okay. So let's actually move on to the interesting part of the, the demonstration here, what everyone wants to see, and that's actually uh, Dataflow Studio here. Um, so within Dataflow Studio, um, we have a bunch of different stuff we can mess around with, right? So um, let's go ahead and set up a flow. So let's create a label. This is for organization here um, and give it a name, EAM work order uh, to SFTP example. So yeah, like today, we're just going to set up a very simple flow. We're going to send a maintenance order bod from EAM, drop it into an SFTP. I don't actually have an SFTP set up for this, um, and doing so in a demonstration would probably compromise the security of the SFTP, so uh, no point in doing that. So this, again, is just a high-level overview. Uh, all right, so the main functioning component of Dataflow Studio is these processors here. So within these processors, we drag one down, um, then we got to pick, right? So as you can see, there's a lot of options. So there is a lot of stuff that there's built to do. So um, there's some powerful things in here that you can set up um, for very specific, you know, operations, you know, dropping something into Dropbox, for example. I'm not sure how useful that would be, but uh, the one we're looking for right now is getting bots out of EAM. So we can actually filter down um, here and we found one called bot from EAM. Okay. Um, all right, so it says I already have another one, so it's complaining. So let's go ahead and delete that one. I did this flow a while back. Okay, so in here is our processor. As you can see right now, it's complaining because it doesn't have any relationship uh, to go on. Um, just as a high-level overview of what this technology is, Dataflow Studio, as some of you may already know, is built on what's called Apache NiFi which is very good because it allows you to chat GPT a lot of good things and there's a lot of ready documentation you can find on the internet. Um, so it's not specific to EAM per se, right? Or Dataflow Studio. So documentation is available um, for a lot of these processors that aren't specific to EAM. This one is specific to EAM. Um, so we just kind of have to know how to do this and kind of just toy around a bit till we figure it out. Um, from there, let's try to configure our processor to do some stuff. As I already mentioned, we're sending out a maintenance order bod. So that's our sync maintenance order. We'll go ahead and make that true. That says, okay, we're sending bots from EAM. This one's going to handle only maintenance orders. From here, you can kind of see every bot it can process and turn them on at will if you need to. Um, some scheduling and settings in here you don't really need to worry about for the most part. Um, relationships, this is saying, okay, should it fail to process, you know, what happens, what do you do with it? Uh, we can worry about that another time. So right now it's pretty much complaining because, okay, we're getting the bot out of EAM, but it has nowhere to go. Um, so from there, we actually need to create another processor to put it somewhere. And in this case, in this example, we're going to talk about moving it to an SFTP. Uh, SFTP, for those who are not familiar, is just a server um, that holds files, and it's kind of a secure way to send um, files back and forth between or it's a secure way to set up a server to basically store files and then have remotely accessed uh, for pushing and pulling data and moving those files on and off that server. Um, so in this example, we're going to actually try to push it to the SFTP. Um, so here we go. Um, and then from there, we actually need to connect the two. Um, let's see. So let's try to move it there um, for sync maintenance orders. All right, still getting error here because unmatched is not. So, okay, so if it creates a bod that we have flagged as true, it's not a maintenance order, for example, it needs to have somewhere to go. That's what it's complaining about. So for ones that are unmatched, let's just say terminate, don't do anything. All right, now it's kind of ready to activate, um, but we're not going to activate this flow completely because this part is actually not configured. So should we actually be doing a full length example and has an, have an FCTP set up, then we'd actually have to do some stuff in here. Um, properties, right? This would be um, where you actually put the username and password of your SFTP as well as the file path to send it to. Um, again, this is the put SFTP is not EAM native. So there's actually good documentation available on the internet to just find out how to do this. 
uh, because it's part of Apache NiFi's, um, you know, set uh, registry. So um, good stuff on here to actually figure out how to set this up. I know it looks like a lot of stuff, but um, you can figure out how to do it just with a few quick Google searches. So uh, from there, we have this set up and this is actually ready to go. So we can actually activate this. Let's pretend the SFTP is actually set up and would do something. Um, right now it's not, but for the sake of this demonstration, we can actually see these six maintenance order flowing through and see how it works. Uh, okay, so this is actually activated now. Um, and we're actually ready to have a work order be sent from EAM. So let's see if that works. Go to a work order maybe that Rebecca, the functional expert, has set up that maybe will work here. So let's try this. Huzzah, we have a completed work order. As I mentioned before, on completion, this should then actually go to the database, say, hey, it's being completed. Do we have our setup correct to send things outbound, uh, which we do. So then it triggers a triggers a Java job within the source code of EAM to send this <clears throat> outbound, um, which we can actually see in two ways. We can actually either go to the DataBridge outbound events uh, to see things that are trying to process, or we can go to DataBridge message status, um, which is kind of the way you view everything going both inbound and outbound. Okay, looks like we have a successful sync maintenance order leaving at 9.20 in the morning, which is when we're doing this uh, recording. So that looks good. Um, so processing status says completed. So let's hope it made the data pro successfully. So let's take a look. Okay, we have within our queue, 86 maintenance orders. Looks like we triggered this. This hasn't been turned on in quite some time. Um, so maybe we got a few things in here that we weren't expecting, but uh, nonetheless, our maintenance order should probably be in here. Um, within here in this queue, you can kind of see all the data you got in here. Like I said, this is probably a bunch of work orders. Um, let's see if we have ours. So yeah, this is 5.5, five, for example. So this hasn't been running quite some time, all the setup for it. So that data checker job probably is what did it. Um, so we have a little more in here than we were expecting, um, but that's okay. Um, once it's up and running, you know, you're not going to have these all these extra ones going out. It's going to be pretty much... Um, at time of execution, it'll send things through. Um, so as you can see, this is what a sync maintenance order bod looks like. It's just like ION. Uh, we have our data in here. Um, from there, um, we can check, right? Everything looks good. All the data looks like how I want it. Uh, go back to David Flow Studio. And from there, we could then run this once or you know, um, start it if it was properly configured. Um, but as we can see, I've not fully actually set up the SFTP. Um, so it's not has nowhere really to go. This again was just a demonstration to show you um, how the basic process work. Like I mentioned before, there's many many processors that you can do in here. Um, Hexagon claims to have some out of the box configuration as well, um, but there's a lot you can do within here. It's a powerful tool. Uh, sometimes it can be a bit clunky to use, just like Ion. So uh, a lot of this is a lot of trial and error and figuring out how to you know work these processors. Luckily, like I said. A lot of this is available on the internet because it's built on Apache NiFi. Uh, ChatGPT can be your savior when it comes to trying to figure out things you're not familiar with. Um, if you need to do data manipulation, there exists some scripting languages uh, options as well, um, such as you know you can use Groovy scripting, um, which is basically a language to apply Google. It's basically Java. Um, that's how you can do manipulations. Whereas in Ion, you had to use XSLT, a mapper. Uh, but you can do very similar things with here. It's, again, a bit clunky uh, and hard to figure out sometimes. It requires some technical expertise when it comes to actually doing scripting. Um, it's not as out of the box and drag and drop as I would have hoped in some instances. Um, but for specific scenarios, it can be very useful, like putting an SFTP. Um, again, there's some nice out-of-the-box stuff there. And when you, it comes to translating your integrations off of ION, um, you know, because again, as Ion is owned by a different company and the technologies, you know, go farther and farther apart, um, you know, between Hexagon and Infor, um, you know, things are going to start to break in the future. So if you're looking to rapidly move a very basic integration off of Ion um, and, you know, go fully on the Hexagon route, uh, this can be definitely a very powerful tool here at David Pro. So, or Dataflow Studio. So, that's, again, high-level overview. Many things you can do with this. Um, so don't hesitate to reach out to our team. 
shoot us an email. Um, we'd be more than happy to answer your questions. That was great. Thanks, Victor. I know a lot of us have been curious about DataBridge Pro, so I appreciate you taking the time to review the setup and walk through an example. And for those watching, thanks for joining us today and check back soon for more EAM content.